Ayo, hey welcome back to Anime Sereo. Today's story is named Rokudo's Bad Girls. What a spicy title. Guess what? It's about a bullied kid who awakens some mysterious ancestral ability that has all the girls falling for him. Now that's a superpower that I would like to have. Anyways, let's play a little game. Watch this video and comment down below how many spicy moments are there that you would want to fast forward if your grandparents are around, if you know what I mean. We'll compare the numbers and see who has the strictest grandparents. Anyways, it wasn't all girls and cheers for our guy Rokudo. The sad life of Rokudo begins in his school as he's being made fun of by the school jock and his fellows. One of the bullies named Inuma throws his own food at him and tells him to catch it with his own mouth. Once he's done with him, our main character is finally allowed to go back to his seat. He goes back dejected and is on the verge of crying when his two equally loser friends offer him their food. The others are named Masaru and Koda and they try their best to cheer him up with their own food, but are all interrupted by the sight of Tsubaki's thighs. Tsubaki happens to be Inuma's girlfriend and catches them all peeping at her. Completely furious with all of them, she shouts at the trio. This alerts Inuma and he threatens to tear them apart if they ever try to pull something off like this again. The trio then hides in the bathroom to escape all of his bullying and they share their fantasies of actually having a rosy and normal high school life while simultaneously talking bad about Tsubaki. Later, all three of them go to Rokudo's house so they could relax and blow off some steam. But things take a rather unexpected turn when Rokudo receives a package. Inside, there's a scroll and a small letter from his dead grandfather. Apparently, the scroll is a family heirloom that will save Rokudo's life that's in danger according to the letter. The three losers ponder upon what all of this means and, at the end, decide to open the scroll as Masaru mentions that the school is definitely something that qualifies as a danger in Rokudo's life. Once they open it, a mark appears on his forehead and thus, they all come to the conclusion that he has awakened some awesome new powers that will let him stand up to the bullies. The next day, in the middle of the street, the opportunity to test his newfound powers arrives as some bullies try to beat him up. Blinded by sheer stupidity, he tells them to back off as he now has awakened his ancestors' powers. But the bullies simply start hitting him without a care in the world. After a few seconds, the girl in the bullies group tells them to leave him alone and just get out of there. When he goes to school, Tsubaki helps him and protects him from Inuma while using his friends as a scapegoat. Later, the trio meets in their usual place, the bathroom, to discuss how the girls have been helping Rokudo lately. But since both of those incidents can qualify as a coincidence, they all think that it's not a big deal. But then, Tsubaki comes outside the bathroom door and apologizes to Rokudo for all her previous behavior, and then runs off. This is particularly weird and gets them all to start thinking again. On their way back from school, his friends notice that the girls have been all staring at him. After another encounter with Inuma, who is mad at Rokudo for doing something to Tsubaki, her phone's wallpaper now happens to be none other than Rokudo. Just then, all the girls start coming towards Rokudo and he runs away from there. While he's running, he bumps into a blonde delinquent girl whose hands are covered in blood of some men that she beat up just now. She notices the mark on Rokudo's forehead and immediately falls for him. The girl's name is Rana, and she happens to be enrolled in the same school as Rokudo but hasn't attended a single day. She goes there to sit beside Rokudo and responds lovingly to everything he says while completely shutting off and even beating up other men. After she beats up one of Inuma's buddies, Rokudo runs away from everyone as he is afraid, but his friends confront him and tell him to protect Rana at all costs as he should not abandon her now. Since Rokudo is the biggest loser even among losers, he didn't even know how girls think or what they do. Afterwards, he makes a promise with Rana that she won't do anything even if she is provoked and that he will protect her. The next day, he starts contemplating what he has done and starts panicking as he is unable to protect Rana. He decides to tell her to break that promise but sees that she's completely bruised all over her body. Rana, however, assures him that all of them were just pushovers and that he shouldn't worry about anything as she only got bruised because of their promise. This awakens somewhat of a manly touch in Rokudo and he finally decides to do something a real man would in that situation. He challenges Inuma and decides to take him on himself on the rooftop. You go bro. Inuma takes him up on the challenge and completely destroys him by punching him in the face over and over again. He punches him to the point that he has to beg for Rana's help and as soon as he says the word, she ends the fight in one shot. All of this really depresses Rokudo, as it should. He keeps beating himself up over having to be protected by the one girl he swore to protect. His friends try to confront him but all to no avail. Later, Inuma invites him to a food joint. 
He goes there even though he's scared, and when he gets there, Inuma acts quite friendly with him and they both share a meal. Later, he asks Inuma about why he had called him. To this he replies that he just wanted to have some food with his buddy. Even though this surprises our loser boy, it's not the most surprising thing that happens there. He also finds out that the top delinquent in the school named Osanada is after him now. After a while, one of the subordinates of Osanada confronts him and asks if he is the one influencing all the girls. As Rokudo is too much of a wimp to give him a reply, he deduces that he's got the wrong man. But just then, his girlfriend intervenes and stops him from hitting the boy. This confirms all his doubts, and thus, the impending doom awaits for Rokudo as he fears Osanada's wrath. The next day, Osanada comes into the class and confronts Rokudo. But turns out, Osanada is actually a little girl and the spell doesn't seem to be working on her. However, Rokudo is saved yet again as she is now unable to punch him because of the effects of the spell. This piques her interest and she invites him to an old building in the school where Rokudo sees her room. After they discuss some things with each other, she declares that he is her first love. But Rokudo starts having a flashback about his own unrequited first love, which leads to him telling her that she needs to think about her first love and only declare it for the person she thinks is worthy of it. Coming back to a normal day of school now, Rokudo decides to speak up during class and, and tell everyone that they should work with plants for their class project. Everyone tries to disagree with him as it's a childish idea, but thanks to the influence of Rana and Osanada, everybody agrees to this idea and participates in the activity. He wants to give Osanada a normal, regular high school life as he doesn't like her violent nature. But as the city's number one gang, the Oshinuma group, tries to approach Osanada to become their leader, Rokudo has his eyes dead set on getting her back. He asks Rana for help on the condition that she doesn't hurt herself, a prospect she wholeheartedly agrees to. Later on, they bust the gang meeting and Rokudo starts reading their plant's journal to Osanada in hopes of trying to get her back. Despite Rana's efforts, he gets hit by the gang members, but he keeps on reading. At the end, he's able to convince the little girl to finally come back to his side as she realizes that she does love him. At the end, they are all able to escape unscathed thanks to some unexpected help from Inuma. Now that the gang wars have been avoided, it's a normal day at Rokudo's house. Until Inuma brings a rowdy, gangster-esque bike for him to ride. Unwillingly, he takes it and is on the way to school when a weird traffic police-obsessed girl named Azami spots him and starts chasing him. He somehow escapes but drops his ID. She comes to the school to give his ID back when she falls in love with him too. She then takes him on a long trip on her own bike. After a few rides, she tells him to stop riding a delinquent bike as she doesn't like it. Rokudo later meets Oshinuma Gang's number 3, Aoi. He asks about a girl trying to impersonate a traffic cop. Turns out it's Azami. Later, the gang finds out how Azami's mentor in the traffic police got into an accident because of Azami and that she will be persecuting Aoi for it. At the end, Rokudo takes on an oath to save Azami at all costs. Rokudo and others make it to the meeting point of Aoi and Azami as they face off against each other. Aoi asks Azami to join him as he wants such a thrill-seeking girl in his gang, but she blatantly refuses. He then suggests a game of tag with Rokudo on the line. Later on, Aoi gets a flashback on how the accident of that officer happened, which puts things into perspective for everyone. After some backup from Inuma and Rana, Rokudo seals his team's victory by using his spell on Azami and grabbing onto her hand. After the loss, Aoi makes her the leader of his gang and decides to leave, but Azami drags her to the traffic officer. Turns out he's okay and it's just that he can't ride anymore. Everyone finally has some time to relax as there might be some peace now in Rokudo's life. As he's going to school, all the girls start fighting on who carries the bag. The class rep sees all this fiasco and makes some wrong assumptions about Rokudo. She keeps following him around everywhere to find out more about him, while everyone else tries to figure out how to freely talk to Rana. Also, Nada and Rana form a bond of friendship, and all the girls find a dress for Rana so that she can impress Rokudo. Rokudo is pleasantly surprised by the dress and praises Rana for her beauty, while the class rep secretly keeps on spying them. And on this note, our recap for today comes to an end. If you enjoyed it, drop us a like, and don't forget about our game. Comment down below how many moments did you count that are worth closing your kids' eyes. And let's compare the numbers. Also, subscribe to Anime Soreo for more awesome animes like this recapped on your feed, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace!